In this video, we're going to have a look at how to create a cool main menu inside of Unity. At the end, it should look something like this. Special thanks to Hands Off Tune, Judaman, and Armin Narusi for their support on Patreon. And now, let's make a menu. So I currently have two scenes, a menu one which is completely empty, and a game one. Just pretend that you're seeing a game here. Now inside of our menu scene, let's begin by creating the UI. Let's right click in our hierarchy, go UI and select panel. This will create a canvas and inside of this canvas, it will create a panel. Now I want to go under image and replace the source image. I've imported my own background image here that we can drag in. You can choose to use any sprite here. Just make sure that when you select it under texture type, it's set to sprite 2D and UI. Then under our panel, let's go to color and let's amp up the alpha channel. So now we have a nice backdrop for our menu. Let's rename it to background. And at this point, we're ready to add some text. Let's right click on our canvas, go UI, select text. And of course we could just use Unity's default text here. We could scale it up, center it, change the font size, change the color, but that's about the control that we have. If we want to change the font, we need to import some custom fonts. We can add nice looking shadows or gradients. And for most menus that I've created, I definitely want to have these options. So instead, let's delete this text object and let's import a free package called Text Mesh Pro. So let's go to the asset store, search for Text Mesh Pro. I'll of course have a link for this in the description. Let's select the pack here. This pack was recently acquired by Unity and I've created a separate video on how to use it. So if you find something confusing along the way, definitely check that out. For now, we can just hit download or import and we'll hit import again. And after it's done, you should see a folder in your project panel called Text Mesh Pro. Now we can go back to our scene view. We can right click on our canvas, go UI, and you should now see an option here called Text Mesh Pro Text. And right off the bat, we can see that the text renders a lot more clearly. Let's go into the font size here and let's change it to something like 84. Let's also give our text some room. I'll hold down Alt to scale from the center. Let's make sure to align our text to the center, both horizontally and vertically. Now instead of new text, we'll write play with capital letters. And I'm also going to change the font asset to Roboto Bold. And I think we can make this even more bold. So let's also under font style, check off the B here. That looks pretty good, but currently it's just a plain white. To change this, let's scroll down under the material settings. Let's first add an underlay in order to create a shadow. Let's enable this. Let's offset it by one on the X, by minus one on the Y. We can also increase the softness to blur the shadow a bit. I think that looks a lot better. Let's also add a gradient to the text. We do that under the font settings. Where it says color gradient, we'll make sure to check that. And we can now configure a color for both the top left and right and the bottom left and right. But instead of doing that in here, since I want all of my text elements to share the same gradient, we can create a color gradient asset. To do that, we'll go to the project, right click, go create, Text Mesh Pro and let's select Color Gradient. Let's rename this asset to Gold. And now we can define some colors. And I have some color codes at the ready here, so I'll simply paste these in. I'm gonna be using the same one for the top left and right. And then for the bottom left and right, we'll choose another one, a bit darker this time. So that's some nice yellow and orange colors. Let's now select our text object. Let's scroll to the gradient part and let's now drag in our gold object into the gradient preset slot. And there we go, we now have a nice gradient to our text. Let's rename this text to play. And of course, this is currently just a simple text object. We want to turn this into a button. To do that, let's right click on our canvas, go UI, and let's create a button. Let's start by scaling this button up and let's move it up as well. For the image here, we'll make that completely black. And for now, we'll just go ahead and disable it. Then under our button, we'll notice a text object. And this is what we want to replace with the play text that we just created. So let's delete this text object and instead drag in our play text. Let's just rename this to text and instead rename our button to play button. We can now select our text object. We'll click on the anchor presets at the top of the rect transform, hold down alt and click on the bottom right corner. This will snap our text to the center of our play button and make sure to always scale it to the same size as the button. So now we should see that if we hit play, we can actually press on our text. However, we don't actually see anything changing. We need some visual feedback on what's going on. To do that, let's re-enable our image. Under the normal color, let's go and change the alpha to zero. Then under highlighted color, we'll definitely also decrease it, but we do want it to be visible. And when we then press the object, we want it to be even clearer. So with these settings, if we try and hit play, 
we should see that when we hover over our text, the black box appears and when we click it, it becomes even darker. Awesome! We can of course change the size of the black box by adjusting this element. So when we're happy with our button, let's go ahead and duplicate it. We'll click and drag while holding down shift to move it down on only one axis. And this is going to be our options button. So let's change the text to options. Let's also increase the width to make room for it. And let's rename it to options button. Again, we'll duplicate this, hold down shift while moving it down. And finally, we want this to be our quit button. Again, we'll resize it to only just fit our text. And we then rename the button to quit button. Awesome, so if we now hit play, we should see that we're able to select three different buttons and that you can also use your keyboard to change between them. Of course, our buttons currently don't do anything. Our play button should load the next scene, our quit button should close the game and our options button should lead to another menu. Let's start by creating this menu. To do that, let's go to our canvas, let's right click and create an empty. We'll rename this to our main menu. Let's also just size it up a bit. This is going to contain all of our main menu elements. So we can select all of our buttons and drag them under our main menu object. Let's then duplicate this object and let's rename this one to options menu. Let's disable the main menu. Now for this menu, I don't want a lot of buttons, but I do want it to say options at the top. So I'm gonna go under my options button, take the text element alone and drag it to the top. I'm then gonna drag it up here where it says play and I'm gonna delete both the play and options button. The quit button we can turn into a back button Let's call it back button and change the text to back. I'll also decrease the text size to something like 50 and we'll then resize it to fit. And now we have some room where we can add our settings. I'm just gonna show you how to add a simple slider. We'll right click on our options menu, go UI and select slider. Let's definitely make this wider and a bit taller. Let's go into the slider, find the handle and let's disable the image component. We can then select our background and make this a neutral black. Let's also decrease the alpha to not make it stand out too much. Finally, we can go under fill area and select fill. And let's use the color picker here to get a nice color from our text. Now we should see if we hit play that we're able to adjust our slider to anything that we'd like. Let's also add a tiny text element telling what the slider does. To do that, let's duplicate our text. Let's move this on top of the slider. Let's rename this to volume. Let's change the text to volume as well. And let's decrease the font size to something like 32. We now shrink down this element, move it to our slider and let's align it to the left. And we've now created a volume slider. Of course our slider doesn't change any settings. If you wanna know how to create a options menu in Unity, definitely let me know in the comments. So now we have our two menus, an options menu as well as a main menu. All that's left is to add functionality to these two menus. Let's begin with the play button. This is found under the main menu object. But instead of adding a separate script for the play button itself, let's add a script to the main menu object that will have functionality for all of our menu buttons. Let's hit add component, let's write main menu, let's create a new script of type C sharp, create an add, and let's double click it to open it up in Visual Studio. Now let's remove our start and update. And instead let's create our own function that will call whenever we press the play button. In order to be able to call it from the button, we need to make the method public. So we'll write public void, let's call it play game, and inside of this method, we'll simply load the next level. Whenever we want to change scenes in Unity, we need to be using Unity Engine dot scene management. Now we can simply go scene manager dot load scene. And here we could give it a name of the scene, say level one. We could also give it a build index, say one. But instead of loading a particular level, let's simply load the next level in the queue. To do that, we get the index of our currently loaded level. So scene manager dot get active scene dot build index and we simply increase it by one. So plus one. If we now save this and go into Unity, we of course need to make sure that we add our scenes to the queue. To do that, we go file, build settings, and here we have all the scenes in our build. First, we wanna add our menu. So that has an index of zero and we'll then add our game, which has an index of one. Now, the last thing we need to do is simply hook up our play button to the function that we just created. To do that, let's select the button. Let's scroll down to where it says on click. This is a Unity event. We can add an action to this event by hitting the plus button. We need to select an object that will be our main menu. So let's drag that in there. Now we can go and find our main menu script. And under here, we've created a function called play game. And now if we play our game and press on the play button, it loads the next scene, which is our game. Even though currently maybe our menu is more fun. 
So that's awesome. The next button we'll hook up is the quit button. Again, we can do this inside of the same script. So we'll create another public void. And this one we'll call quit game. And this is even simpler. We simply go application dot quit. And that should close down the program. However, this won't happen inside of the Unity editor. So just to let ourselves know that this is working, we'll throw debug dot log and the message will be quit. Again, let's go into Unity. Let's select our quit button. Let's scroll down to the on click event. Let's add an action. Again, we want to reference our main menu and the function that we want to call is under main menu and it's called quit game. And again, if we hit play and select quit, we can now see the quit message displayed in the console. And I promise you that if you build this and try and do the same thing, it will close down the program. Now the last button that's left is our options button. That's because we don't want this to load another scene or quit the program. We simply want this to change to another menu. And we have that menu available right here, it's just disabled. So we don't actually need to do any programming. We simply select our options button, scroll down to the on click event, add an action, and here we can simply reference our options menu directly. Then as the function, we'll go under game object and we'll choose the set active function. This is a really awesome part of the Unity UI events. The fact that we can call functions on Unity components. And then we can choose whether or not we want the game object to be enabled. And in this case we do. But we also need to disable our main menu. So we'll just add another action. This time we'll reference our main menu. We'll again go under game object, choose set active. And this time we want it to be false. So if we now play the game and select our options, we can see that our main menu gets disabled and our options menu gets enabled. And here we are in our options menu. Of course, we also need to be able to transition back using the back button. To do that, we'll go under the options menu, select our back button, add an action. And here we want to reference our main menu, go under game object, you guessed it, we'll select set active and we'll set that to true. And then we want to disable our options menu. So we'll add another action, drag in the options menu, go game object, set active, and this time false. And that completes our menu. We can go quit in order to quit the game. We can go options in order to go into our options menu and adjust our volume. We can select back and then we can press play and it puts us into the game. Yay. That's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a future one. Also, if you like the videos in general, I suggest checking out our Patreon page. Patreon is a way for you to donate a monthly amount of your choosing and you can cancel it at any time. It's what keeps this channel going. On that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in October and a special thanks to Dudeman, Armin, Hans Haftoon, Cole Cabral, Superman the Great, James P, Thomas Vorley, Cyborg Mummy, Jason Latido, Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, Manolis, Nick Lang, Aaron, Robert Bund, and Peter Locke. You guys rock.